Hi guys, so Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, has had a particular style of attack when it came to dealing with Boris Johnson. When he took over from his predecessor Jeremy Corbyn, Starmer presented himself like a lawyer speaking to a judge, the arbiter being the general public. Sir Keir would appear cool and calculated, and this would contrast with Johnson's ranting and raving. While this did give him the impression of being prime ministerial, it did carry the problem of making him look stiff and formal. Stormer tried jokes and quips, but many of them felt strained and few hit the mark. However, on Wednesday I believe we saw a different approach. Stormer was willing to perhaps bend the rules of Parliament, in a sense play Johnson's own game against him, and I think it may have worked. Have a look. So, Mr Speaker, yesterday's apology lasted for as long as the Prime Minister thought necessary to be clipped for the news. But once, once the cameras were off, once the cameras were off, the Prime Minister went to see his backbenchers and he was back to blaming everyone else. He even said that the Archbishop of Canterbury had not been critical enough of Putin. In fact, the Archbishop called Putin's war an act of great evil, and the Church of England has led the way in providing refuge to those fleeing. Would the Prime Minister like to take this opportunity to apologise for slandering the Archbishop and the Church of England? Well done, well done. I love this, because what he's doing here is, I, he, doesn't, he was not present, but he probably heard it from someone who was present when Boris Johnson spoke to the backbenchers. Someone there you know, provided information to uh, the media and then the Labour Party got wind of it. Or maybe it was directly to the, the Labour Party. But some of this information was leaked anyway. And it uh, makes Johnson look like a liar once again. You know, he has done it before. He has said one thing in Parliament and then gone into the tea room and said the opposite. Like when he said that he apologised, he felt truly sorry. And then he went into the tea room and said, uh, you know, what was I apologising for? I did nothing wrong. <laughs> this has clearly rattled the Tories. And this is what you need to do. You need to really upset them. Because you can't try and play fair, you can't try and be noble, you can't be honourable, because you're dealing with people who are dishonourable. And how do you deal with them? Well, in a sense, you almost have to play their game. And I think this is what Keir Starmer is doing. Mr Speaker, I, I, I think the, 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 the right honourable gentleman uh, I, I was I was slightly taken aback to be uh, for the gov sorry, Mr. Speaker. I was slightly taken aback for the government to be criticised over the uh, policy that we have uh, devised to uh, end the end the, the deaths at sea in the Channel as a result of cruel criminal gangs. I, I was surprised uh, to be a, to, that we were attacked for that. And actually, Mr. Speaker, it turns out that that policy. Do you know who proposed that policy? Uh, first of all, in, in 2004. It was David Blunkett, uh, Mr. Speaker, who said it was a 21st. Yes, it was, and she'll remember a 21st century solution to the problems of illegal asylum seeking and immigration. Illegal? I, I, look, I don't know what David Blunkett put forward, but this is your policy. Like, can somebody not criticise your policy? So you know, somebody can criticise David Blunkett's policy. They can also criticise your policy. Is that not possible? Is it, well, the Labour Party did something in the past, that means the Labour Party today can't criticise the Tories because they have, they have something similar. Although I doubt David Blunker's policy was about sending people to a, another country where they would be processed there and they would stay there. Uh, he should stick with, he's a Corbyn Easter, he's a Corbyn Easter in a smart Islington suit. That's the truth. I think you'll find Mr Corbyn doesn't have the whip. But I think that's a no then. Pathetic. He, he never takes responsibility for his words or actions. They were all there. The Prime Minister also accused the BBC of not being critical enough of Putin. Would the Prime Minister 
But the Prime Minister have the guts to say that to the face of Clive Myrie, Lee Doucette and Steve Rosenberg, who have all risked their lives day in, day out, on the front line in Russia and Ukraine, uncovering Putin's barbarism. Uh, 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 if, the, if the right honourable gentleman wants to uh, join the Conservative Party and come and listen to uh, what uh, the, the meetings of the uh, Conservative Party, he's welcome to do it. Uh, but I, I, though, as I say, I think he's a Corbynista in an Islington suit. But I said nothing of the kind. Uh, and I have the highest admiration uh, as, a, as a journalist and a former journalist for what journalists do. Uh <laughs> he's even lying now admiration for journalism the guy who who lied to people who had to resign was it or was he fired from the telegraph because he lied <laughs> admiration for journalism i think they do an outstanding they do an outstanding i mean i think he should withdraw what he just said it has absolutely 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 no basis or foundation in truth here's Starmer. That's how he operates. A merely mouthed apology when the cameras roll, a vicious attack on those who tell the truth as soon as the cameras are off. Slander decent people in a private room. Let the slander spread without the backbone to repeat it in public. How can the Prime Minister claim to be a patriot when he deliberately attacks and degrades the institutions of our great country? Well said. Now, <laughs> you would imagine Boris Johnson scuttled away and his MPs would have been extremely embarrassed by that. But wait till you see this. This is a letter that was sent by Sir David Evanet, MP, to Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons. And it says, I'm not going to read the entire letter, but it says here, Dear Mr. Speaker, subject conduct of Sir Keir Starmer MP and he says at today's Prime Minister's questions the leader of the Labour Party and Her Majesty's opposition knowingly misled the House and then he quotes what Keir Starmer said just in the video a moment ago and then he replies with well the Prime Minister clearly and factually replied I said nothing of the kind I have the highest admiration as a journalist and former journalist okay um what this MP is trying to do is say that yeah, it doesn't matter that Boris Johnson lies to Parliament, misleads Parliament every time he's there. What we're going to do is we're going to pile on <laughs> Keir Starmer here. And this was the closing part of his letter. It says, I'm guided by Esker May. This is one of the rules in Parliament um, that the making of a deliberate misleading statement may be contempt so he's asking for Keir Starmer's head here. Keir Starmer has to resign because he misled Parliament. You know, somebody, his leader, the leader of the Conservatives, misleading Parliament on a weekly basis. The irony of this. It is clear that he uh, clear here that this is not an inadvertent. Uh, this was not inadvertent. The Labour leader was able to retract the statement and correct the record, but chose not to do so. He should now withdraw the statement and make a public apology for misleading the House. I'd be grateful if your, uh, if your investigation could consider uh, the appropriate sanction in this case. So this guy wants Keir Starmer to be removed basically from Parliament because he said that Boris Johnson uh, lied. Uh, sorry, Boris Johnson told lies or made statements about the BBC and. Uh, the the head of the Church of England, which in a in a meeting with back ben with backbenchers, uh, that Johnson said this and it was untrue. Um, well, my response, if I was Keir Starmer to Sir David, would be, "Go f yourself." <laughs> Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.